So first of all, there are many types of living things in our world, such as human, animal, plant, and microorganism. We all need energy from respiration process. So what is respiration process? Respiration process is uh, oxidation of food substances in the mitochondria of the cell to release energy. So there are two types of respiration. First, external respiration and internal respiration. External respiration is by using our nose to breathe in, and then second is internal respiration. In the lung, we are use uh, how the oxygen is diffused for our life to the blood capillary. What are the main substrate of energy production? So first of all, the primary substrate of energy production is glucose, and secondly is fat and protein. Hi, so my name is Afaf and today I will be talking about aerobic respiration. So have you ever wondered what happens uh, to glucose after it has finished being digested? So what happens is that it is used for cellular respiration. So cellular respiration occurs in every single living thing, humans, animals, plants, all alike. So, um, there are two types of cellular respiration. First is aerobic and another is anaerobic. So I will be talking about aerobic. So aerobic respiration occurs usually during uh, leisure activities when we have proper intake of oxygen and we and when we are not breathing heavily. Because uh, one of the main uh, substances that are used in cellular in aerobic respiration is oxygen itself. So aerobic respiration is a process of breaking down glucose with the presence of oxygen. So as we can see here, this is a simplified version of what happens during uh, aerobic respiration. So firstly, as we can see here, this is oxygen. Oxygen breaks down glucose, in other words, it oxidizes glucose completely. So uh, it can produce carbon dioxide, water and also ATP. Uh, aerobic, during aerobic respiration, the number of ATP molecules produced is 36 to 38 uh, molecules. So what is, uh, so in other words, it's a high level of energy. So what these ATPs are used for is uh, usually it's used in cell division or it is used when we want to transport substances across the cell membrane uh, during active transport so that those are one uh, a few of the functions of it so as i have stated before it occurs also in plants so how it happens in plants is firstly the plants gain glucose from photosynthesis and uh, the byproducts of photosynthesis are glucose and oxygen uh, so uh, the plants use a certain amount of glucose and oxygen to produce energy for themselves so they can grow. And in animals, it's just the same as uh, in humans. In other words, we digest food and we use the glucose that we have, uh, uh, which are the byproducts of, uh, of food, to uh, create energy. So, uh, to recap, uh, aerobic uh, respiration occurs when we are uh, doing leisure activities. Uh, it produces high level of ATP or high level of energy. Uh, energy glucose oxidizes completely, and uh, the byproducts of um, aerobic respiration are carbon dioxide, water, and also energy. So that is all from me. On to the next. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Today I will explain to you guys about anaerobic respiration Okay But first Let's try a little experiment Put your hands up in the air And clench and stretch Clench and stretch You can do it with both hands if you want Do it until the end of the video In order for our muscles to contract They need the energy that is released From the respiration However, while doing heavy exercises such as jogging or 100 meter run or playing basketball, all that, not all our muscles can get the oxygen they need.
to do aero to do aerobic respiration. So in this case, our muscle cells switch to anaerobic respiration, which is respiration without oxygen. Okay. So wait, without oxygen. So why don't we just use anaerobic respiration instead of aerobic? So we don't have to breathe, right? But no. Anaerobic respiration is not as good as aerobic respiration, okay? Because firstly, it only produces a small amount of energy, tiny bit, okay? Only a tiny bit if you compare it to the aerobic. And also, it produces a nasty product which is called the lactic acid. So, how's your head? It will start to feel, you will start to feel ache a little bit, but it's okay. Your muscles in your forearm controlling your fingers are doing anaerobic respiration because they can't get the oxygen they need. Oxygen can't get up there. So after a while, lactic acid will build up and you will feel pain. So in order to remove this lactic acid, we need oxygen. We use oxygen to break down the lactic acid. Okay, so you can put down your hand now, okay? Or you can go until you can. Okay. They say after doing anaerobic respiration, our body is in oxygen debt. So we need to pay back the oxygen by breathing in oxygen. So that is why we find ourselves breathing heavily after doing heavy exercises. So that's all for me today. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So today we will proceed to the anaerobic respiration in yeast. As we know, yeast is a microorganism. This is like the human cells that we have learning before this, which is capable to do both aerobic and anaerobic respirations. But it is depends on the availability of oxygen. Remember that. So the next one, the yeast is normally do the aerobic respirations. But if it is under the anaerobic conditions, it will perform the anaerobic respiration. As we can see here, this is the equation of anaerobic respiration in human cells. The glucose will produce lactic acid and energy. But it is opposite to the anaerobic respiration in yeast as the glucose will produce ethanol, carbon dioxide and energy. And this process, we call it fermentation. So the keyword is the ethanol and the enzyme zymase. So the next one, the ethanol. Ethanol, we can use it to make wine and beer. Like this. This is beer, this is wine. Okay. So the next one, the carbon dioxide, it will help in the making of bread. This is the early stage of the dough and it will become bigger like this. Okay? So that's all from me. Thank you very much.